Okay, welcome back to the channel today, guys. We're gonna be working on the motor mounts for a 67 Mustang and 289 motor. Uh, I'm about to get underneath the car and you'll see how bad mine are, but I end up getting these used off of Facebook Marketplace, I think like 150 bucks. They are TCPs, came with all the hardware. <coughs> so, ready to get these in the car. Uh, mine's missing almost all the hardware, so I don't know how the motor hasn't fallen out. But we'll uh, get underneath the car and I'll show you guys kind of what's going on. And we should be able to throw these in relatively uh, quick, I'm hoping. Uh, trying to get all this done while we wait on uh, some stuff for my transmission. So I'll update you guys when I get underneath the car and start working. Okay, guys, we are underneath the car. I'm going to go ahead and show you my motor mounts. Uh, just know I'm not, not proud of this by any means. Uh, I kind of knew it was an issue, but not really. Uh, so here's the first one. Uh, I can't really get up in there. There we go. So we have no bolt going through the cross member. And uh, maybe that front bolt going into the motor. Not even sure. And the other side, I have two going into the motor. But nothing through the cross member. So I kind of knew that they weren't exactly the best. Uh, I didn't honestly look at them too close so I just kind of came under here and was like oh wow yeah those need to be replaced and I never really paid attention uh, so I am very very fortunate with that that when I did drive this car around I never got injured or anything catch traffic happened absolutely should have so somebody up above is definitely watching over me so very fortunate for that very blessed um, but now it's time to make it right so let's get to it I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse uh, plan is to do one at a time, one side at a time. Uh, I'm going to try and just lift up the oil pan, especially because that's where I read online a lot of people just put a 2x4 on their jack and disperse the weight of all, uh, you know, on their oil pan, and that seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and try that as well, just get it kind of up and out of the way. I'm going to start with this passenger side here. I've uh, never done motor mounts before, like everything else on uh, these cars. Pretty much my first time doing all this, so I'll get you guys set up. Uh, and we'll get rocking and rolling here on the time lapse, but uh, let's see. I'm going to try and get you guys out of the way so I can work. We're right up in there, and then that's just my starter cable uh, labeled right there just so I didn't get confused. So um, we're going to get started. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you an update because, man, this has been kicking my butt. So those of you who've uh, followed the channel for a while, you guys know that I think this car has been replaced because I couldn't find any VIN on any of the fender aprons, uh, which is how come the buck tag, I think, is riveted on over there. So uh, first, I didn't realize that with the mount, I'd have to move that piece. What do you guys notice about that piece? That bolt hole isn't straight, um, which is kicking. Oh wait, no, that wouldn't matter. Never mind. Uh, this bottom second one here, which my plate has three. These TCPs. So I don't know if you're supposed to add add one or not, but basically it just has these two. So I'm just going to use those two. Hopefully. So the issue I'm running into is. Uh, this is going to be kind of hard to see. This bolt goes through no problem. This one is not going through straight. I can almost feel it on the other side coming through, but it's it's not straight. And it doesn't matter what I do, I cannot get it to come out, you know, the back side here. And I've been playing with it. I've been, you know, taking these off, messing with them, taking this one back out, taking this whole plate out, then working on it. Wow, it just worked on camera too, of course. Okay, so now, <laughs> of course, somehow I did it on camera for the first time. Is it just this plate? I was gonna drill out, my plan was to drill out this little piece here 
Maybe it's the plate. Just if I were to drill out one of these holes on the plate, it would give me just enough room. Because when I get it. Because as soon as I get one through. Anyway, so I've just been kind of shaking them through, really trying to get it. It just seems like I just cannot quite get it. It's so close, but anyway, that's what I'm dealing with. Uh, this is honestly kicking my butt. So I'm gonna keep messing with it for a little while. Hopefully I'll get it. I'll update you guys after. We are back in here it is guys motor is pulled there's nothing there so uh first time pulling motor and i would say you know these really aren't that hard to pull uh so i would you know went better than i thought i forgot a few things uh, a couple of electrical wires for the um you know hood forgot an alternator ground so i just went through and labeled everything I was trying to do it without taking off the strut bar, but I just had to. We did end up dinging the uh, radiator, the fans a little bit. You can see we kind of hit the back side here, but you know, it'll be nice because now I can get in there and actually make some really good mounts. I'm gonna look around online and see if people are mounting them. So if anybody has any ideas how to mount this, like, you know, really good. I can honestly weld anything I need to, but I'd really like to get that more secured. Um, and now that means I can get in my motor mounts. So really my motor mounts were a huge issue. Uh, biggest problem I was having for sure so I'm glad to see that I can get that guy out of here and really start taking a look at really what needs to be replaced and what's fine did have some rust under here it's just really light surface rust so um, nothing to worry about there pretty much plan is is to sand down the entire engine bay and I'm just going to use some like flat black gloss black something like that I don't know yet but some type of black paint everything while I'm here clean everything up as best as I can uh, the strut towers look like they have been replaced at one point in time. They don't have any cracks or anything in them, so that is good. I do know that that is a common thing with these old Mustangs. The frame rails actually look really good. Same with the uh, aprons as well, except for that battery tray one. Looks like it can be uh, cleaned up. Previously did the frame rail a long time ago, and as far as I can tell, it was actually uh, not bad over there. So uh, planning on cleaning up all that and uh, wire wheel and all that, getting that all clean and repainting everything. Um, but all the metal up here, uh, from everything metal fine so far is solid, including the firewall, which is really surprising, even up by the brake, uh, master cylinder. So, um, it probably could be better back over here, just cause this is a high stress area back over here by the master cylinder, especially if I'm gonna go clutch down the road to manual, it might be good to get one of those reinforcement plates while I'm here with the car uh, engine out, while I can get in there. Um, but yeah, here it is not too bad not too shabby uh yeah guys so where i'm working it's about 90 degrees right now i work in direct sunlight so this stuff gets hot tools get really hot so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and hopefully get this to shaded back portion of my yard uh, and then let it sit get everything covered up 
Uh, yes, I know everything's not covered up right now, guys. I will cover all that up. Don't worry. Plug everything. So don't put anything inside the motor. And I'll be, you know, cleaning up as much of this as I can. I really want to paint some things, look over some things. And while I was doing the motor mounts, realizing how difficult that was for me, lifting it wrong, I lifted it. And I was like, you know what? I already got to get this out, you know, to lift it to be able to get the motor mounts in. Uh, I can take it all the way out, put the motor mounts on, paint off everything, make it all look good, you know, reduce some of the hardware. Uh, some of the other things that I wasn't the most satisfied with, I think you can do better now that it is off the car. And then that allowed me to go ahead and get in here and uh, clean up all this as well. Get this all looking nice and right. Uh, figure out all the wiring and some of the other stuff I have going on in here. And um, just kind of go from there. So... What I'm gonna do real quick is hopefully get this to my backyard. It's uh, gonna be interesting. Hoping I can get it back there. If not, then I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna do with it. Uh, but I think that'll complete this video. So if anybody has any good tips or tricks on pulling motors, anything like that, leave them below. Any suggestions on how to make a better radiator mount, go ahead and leave that below. And anything I should check for, I'll have this out. So for anybody who's new to the channel, um, I've replaced the upper and lower cowl, the fin front fenders I patched, valence I replaced, headlight buckets were good, hood I replaced, did door skins, uh, patched a couple pieces on the rear rockers way back when. Quarters was actually pretty good, replaced this whole bottom section of the quarter. Uh, roof didn't replace, just body worked as best as I could, replaced the rear deck panel here and uh yeah guys we had some pretty rough rain and it was that gasket shot so i just threw it ahead on hand because it was leaking all over my brand new uh interior so uh i will be cleaning that up with a razor blade making it look a lot better don't worry just not on the list right now because i want to drive this thing uh replace the trunk lid taillight panel valence bumpers the rear deck filler obviously as i already mentioned so we've done a lot on this car already so a lot of the metal and everything has been replaced I did some of the frame stuff, I think some were subframe connectors, and so really a lot of this metal I have already touched, looked at, pretty happy with it, but uh, radiator core support could absolutely be replaced, but it's there, it's working, so I might not mess with it. But anyways, it's about 90 degrees, so I'm going to get this back to the, hopefully the backyard, get place the hood back on here, and take a break. Um, it's hot, very hot, so anybody has any suggestions go ahead and leave them below that way if anybody else finds this video along their mustang restoration journey uh they may be able to have some good useful tips and tricks that will hopefully assist them as well but anyway thanks guys okay guys welcome back to the motor mount install things took a quite a turn so uh, when we last left off <laughs> motor was in the car <laughs> now it's not so yeah, uh, I left off previously, I was not too uh, thrilled with the motor kind of shifting around on me and not feeling safe. So went ahead and removed it. Uh, that's going to be in a different video. Um, surprisingly very simple. But anyway, back to the subject at hand is the motor mounts. So as you can see, we have our motor mounts up both sides. The, I believe these are TCP motor mounts. And I actually had to enlarge those two holes there just a little bit in order to be able to get it to fit. Um, basically, it was it was so freaking close to fitting with no problems. The only issue I had was basically the threads were getting caught. So I just went ahead and drilled those out a little bit and everything is fitting fine. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put a lock, uh, locking washer on those guys and the nuts, get those uh, nice and tight. And then we're just gonna go hand tight. Um, I'm sure they're supposed to be torqued, but to be honest, I'm not going to torque it. I'm sure they're going to be fine, uh, hand tight. So we're going to do that, and then we'll move on to the driver's side uh, for the motor itself. Sorry about this transition. We do have one side on already. The passenger side here, super easy, super nice. I mean, this whole setup right here, I mean, it was this plate, everything seems super solid. No complaints there. Uh, I'll have different videos of me. I'm going to be cleaning everything up here. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the driver's side one. 
And the way that these mounts work on these 289s, you can see you just have your two mounting points basically on the side of the block here. And you have a long leg and a short leg. The long leg goes towards the front. And I mean, that's it. Super nice, super simple. Uh, and then uh, I need to clean, obviously, all this up, but I will. Um, so let me get the passenger side one in, and then for the driver's side, I'll uh, give you guys some pointers and everything I've learned. I do the passenger side, and uh, we'll get that one going on a uh, time lapse. Okay, guys, so I just want to do a little update. I had to drill out these holes on this side as well. So you see, there's three holes here, there's only two holes that align for the motor mounts from the, in the stock location. So I'm assuming you could add the third hole. Um, I didn't, but there's two there. Um, I'm thinking that's what I'll do. And it actually made sense. So the passenger side, they go in just like this and it utilizes these two holes on both mounts, on the front and the back. The driver's side sits in there like this and it utilizes these two holes as well. The rear utilizes these two holes. So, was it these two or was it those two? I don't remember, but it's slightly different. So I think these are cut, these plates here, to where they can be used for either side. So now it should, again, it's just so close with the threads. Yeah, so it doesn't use the top one. Oh, we are so close. Come on. They're just caught on the threads again. I thought I hit it enough. We are so close. Let's see if I can. Might be able to just tap it on the uh, hammer actually. But it uses the bottom two holes for the driver's side. Uh, I was not aware that they would use different spots. So. Ah, no. I wanted to let everybody else know. Uh, that they do actually put two different holes. Maybe I'm solid on. I don't know. But regardless of anything is better. And what I did have. There's a little wire back here. That thing is stretchy. Alright. So there's the front hole. There's the back one. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I Again, the quality, they are pretty good on these. Um, I believe they were TCP. I know I said I would check my uh, Excel sheet that I have running of everything I've replaced and the prices for them. Uh, I haven't yet. So, uh, the quality's been really good. I mean, considering that they mass produce those, that's awesome. But you, you know, you gotta do just a tiny bit of work and they fit. Uh, drilling out the studs. Or drill them, I drilled them out just a little bit, mainly because I couldn't get them on with the threads of these bolts. Now, I don't know if it comes with hardware uh, originally. Again, I bought the fuse. So these are originally 916 bolts that I have on here that are, um, everything's grade eight. And this is what the kit came with when I bought it from the guy. Uh, so, Zach, thank, thank you for selling these to me. And he has a, 66 Mustang, I believe, that he's just done a heck of a job restoring, doing a ton of work. So I'm assuming if he, you know, gave me this hardware, there's a reason for it, then that it's fine, especially because it is grade eight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse it all.
Okay, those are definitely nice and tight. Yep, all right. So with those guys, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go too crazy on the tightening. Um, I mean, as you saw, they're pretty nice and tight. Uh, yeah, definitely on there really well. The issue is, is I don't know if this bottom section here has any type of support going through. So if I, you know, crush that bolt too much, I can potentially start crinkling that. I don't know if it has like a, you know, a tube or anything to go uh, through there to prevent that from happening. So gotta be kind of careful. As you saw, I went hand tight and then a couple uggas after, uh, and I think that'll be sufficient. But now we just need to go on over to the motor and put our motor mount on. And that's just two bolts and you know, the long side forward and everything. So I'm not really gonna show you guys that. That's just kind of redundant at that point. But for these TCP mounts, I'm gonna show you guys kind of how they fit together. What it comes with. So, this, one's, this one's obviously dirty. Let me it up though. So we have it mounted to our engine here. It'll actually be like that. The long leg will go forward. Then you have your through bolt. So the through bolt, again, this came from a guy I bought from Zach. Did an awesome job. We just have a grade eight. Uh, hardware with the washer and then this big washer that I'm assuming can't comes with the kit And I think that's so you can s use it as a spacer up against this bushing if needed Depending on your motor and where it's, it's at weight sitting again the stuff like you know the stuff flexes For years and years and years in use then you have this guy Just goes on there another uh, washer and then just let her eat tighten it up and you are good to go so Again, I think this product's probably pretty good, really overall. And the fact that it comes with these guys, uh, the camera's on this side, you know, those are probably eh, maybe three-eighths thick or so. Not too bad. They are, I feel like quality steel though. I can tell the difference. And uh, aside from being dirty and being used, you can see all the welds and everything on there look great. The powder coat looks great. No complaints at all. This is super thick metal, as you can see. All the way around, everything just looks good. Uh, so very happy with these. The fact that I was able to find those used is crazy. So, um, yeah, all we do is just throw those two nuts and bolts. I will have to kind of guide those in there, which is awesome and easy. So, I'm just going to grab these two. And we have two little, we have two lock rings, some washers. I don't really know if I'm going to use those, to be honest. I don't really know if it's needed. So, I'm going to see how I did the other one just so they match. I did use a lock ring. Okay, so for the driver's side, those go on there. Got our washers. Looks like I have two different sizes. And there you go. As long as these fit. Nope, those ones don't fit. That one fits. Doesn't fit. Looks like we're going to wash our shorts. This is it right here. This looks like it's it right here. All right. This is probably going to be kind of hard to see. Let me get you guys like an upward angle, I think, here. I'm trying to get you guys balanced. No, that's not really going to happen. Okay, well, I really can't get the phone uh, anywhere. So we're going to be just installing it, as previously mentioned, right here and right here. Uh, just up through and that's and that's it. It's pretty simple really uh, You could totally do this on the car um, to be honest though. I just didn't know how to do it um, and Kind of got Kind of got a little scared uh, just because the whole motor shift and everything 
And, uh, you know, I was like, you know what? Let's just get motor out of the car, especially because I want to clean up a lot of this stuff, go through and wire wheel a lot of this and chipping paint and everything, and uh, really check out the metal in the front. Um, so uh, previously we did from the heads up, so you can see we've got the Felpro gasket, everything's been replaced. This was all painted with the Eastwood just roll on stuff and uh it was all nice and sanded down and everything so i don't know why that stuff didn't hold up too well down here but i'm thinking that's just because of the incorrect timing that i've done on this thing so many times previous when i didn't really know how to do it uh so it was definitely running like crazy hot and everything so i'm sure that had a lot to do with it um so anyway i'm just going to throw on that other one for now and that will conclude the video so i don't think you guys really need to watch me do that especially because I just don't have a good angle. Shout out to Project Source for being my engine stand. I don't know how that thing is holding up to this motor, but it is. Uh, <laughs> I ain't moving it far, that's for sure. If I move it too much, those legs and everything start to buckle in on itself. So uh, we're really gonna try and uh, get jamming on this. I don't really trust this guy. So for the next day or two, I'm gonna be sanding everything down, painting everything I possibly can, getting you know anything I can that I want while the uh, motor's out and um, getting it done as quick as I possibly can because I really don't know how long that wheel will hold. So wish us luck. But anyway, that'll conclude the video of the motor mounts. Um, Thanks for the support as usual. If anybody wants to leave any tips, tricks, or comments, especially if you can do this inside the car, if you guys can leave any comments for anybody else so they don't have to kind of go through the scary moment I had whenever that motor shifted and had to pull the motor, uh, that would be awesome, uh, especially for those guys who are seeing these along their Mustang restoration journey. It really helps them out. Um, views are starting to pick up a little bit. Definitely starting to get some super helpful comments too. So I just really appreciate all the support and uh, we'll just keep an eye on the, the Mustang and hopefully it'll be running here shortly because I want to drive it this year. All right, thanks guys. So we're back on the motor mounts guys and here is the driver's side. As you can see, we're quite a ways off. And that is the passenger side. It's really, really close. So I think I put my mounts on thrown. I think these guys need to be flipped to where we still utilize those two holes on the bracket but flip around the other way to push this out a little bit more and I'm probably going to do that on both sides is what I'm thinking. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a I think there were 916s bolts I had but I'm not sure if those came with the kit or not. Go ahead and grab those and we will start getting it flipped around and see if that helps. So we went ahead and flipped those motor mounts around, still utilizing the same two holes. Or I'm sorry, originally I had it mounted with the bottom hole and this top hole, and this corner one was just in the corner. Um, however, as you can see, as soon as I flipped it up to just these two holes, which now we have another bottom hole here. Huh. Anyway, I don't know. But, now I just need to lift up this motor mount and get it in. And we should be uh, good to go. On the other side, it's still fine. I may need to flip those around or not. To make it longer, because it's also gonna go towards the driver's side a little bit. It is looking like it is pretty centered, based on the, uh, water pump pulley and it's almost right between the fans so i mean once i bring it over this way about an inch or two it should be pretty much centered at that point so maybe you do them slightly different on how you mount them on each side maybe one you have to do like that and the other side you do slightly different uh to be honest i'm not entirely sure i just know that 67s are weird when i was looking around online for doing these motor mounts and Everybody seems to have to get adjustable ones or factory replacement ones are the best option, really. But it seems like you kind of got to get a little creative if you do use some aftermarket ones, unless they're the like uh, Ron Morrison ones. Apparently, those ones are like awesome because they have a ton of adjustability. But again, I picked these up used, and for the price, I don't remember what I paid. Uh, you just can't beat it. So 
I think if I can just bring the motor back up a little bit, jack it up a little bit more and get it in, I'm going to obviously slide in the bolt for the driver's side, and then see where that lands me in the passenger side. So one of the issues I'm having is the car isn't level. Um, I just don't have a way to get this car level. I just don't, I have, my road goes like that. And as you can see, it goes like that. So really to get it level, it's just not really possible. Uh, <laughs> not really great anyway. So that's what I'm thinking. Get the driver's side one on, it'll suck it back that way and then see if that motor mount still reaches or not. If it does, cool, I don't think it will which it means I'll just have to flip that one as well uh, to how I did the driver's side. So no biggie there. I'm just going to go ahead and knock that out off camera because it's going to be a lot of me fiddling, moving this around, pulling, and using very appropriate words for the internet. So wish me luck. We're back, guys. It's a new day. It's been a few days since I've been working on that. Got the uh, transmission hooked up, as you guys previously saw. Uh, anyway, the transmission won't get to the transmission mount, and after I did some research online, I think I installed the motor mounts backwards, so I guess it's that this portion here can be flipped, so I guess I put the passenger side on the driver's side, driver's side on the passenger side, even though I don't think it would make a difference, to be honest, I even think of just flipping it, I don't I don't really think it'd make a difference. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and jack up the oil pan from there and then I'll disconnect one side from the uh, motor mount itself and see if it can, you know, like take it out, see if it'll flip the other way, see if it'll reach. And if it does reach, then I will be good to go. I basically need to move the entire engine back about an inch and a half or two inches which it definitely is sitting, one is sitting lower with these mounts for sure. Definitely sitting lower and it's definitely sitting forward. I used to be able to get in between the crank pulley and my radiator and like with a little bit of room, now I can't. So it's definitely moved forward. Uh, I really hope that if I am able to switch these around, hopefully it goes smooth and then I can get the motor back in, which then means I can get the transmission back up on the transmission mount and then we'll start working on the drive shaft which i need to do the u-joints and everything for uh, once that's all done i'm gonna go ahead and put the suspension and everything back right now i have everything off uh, which is fine because i want to get the headers and everything back on uh, at that point without the monte carlo bar and the strut bar and everything and it'd just be easier with uh, you know all that out i might be able to slide them down in and not hit anything and scratch them so that's where we're at it's kind of just an update. I mean, it's I've already kind of gone over this before. I'm just gonna take out those two bolts, jack it up, take out these two bolts, see if it works. If it does work, then I will take this one out, support the engine, obviously. Hope it doesn't move too much. Grab the other one real quick and uh, switch them. But anyway, that's all guys. So we will uh, get this taken care of. And uh, it's about probably about 90 something degrees, so. I'm in direct sunlight, unfortunately. So my phone's really not gonna be able to handle being on time lapse without getting super hot. So I'm gonna do this one off camera and probably just update you guys after. So here is the passenger side motor mount. So on 67 is the short and uh, side here. Goes, geez, goes towards the front of the car. And I just kind of held it up there and saw that it does fit, but then I would move everything back. Uh, a couple inches actually, a little bit more than one. So, um, gonna go ahead and start working on the other one and uh, getting this one off, supporting the engine. Um, and hope the motor doesn't move too much because uh, I kind of have to do both sides since I don't have anything for the passenger side. <sighs> Unless there's something I could do, maybe I could stick a bolt through there or something and hold it up, maybe. Cause it already moved so yeah, i don't know this is not going to be fun let me think about that and uh i just really want to get the cherry picker back out um i'd much rather just be able to 
get it as is. So I'll figure it out. Let me get it. So we got the dry side off. Now we're on the passenger side, as you can see. Uh, I don't really have a good way. The whole motor's leaning really bad that way. It's probably going to go to the left more. So I took my transmission jack under, tried lifting it up a ton. So I think what's going to have to happen is I'm going to just get some of this stuff out of the way. Kind of thinking I'm going to have to take that mount out. The whole engine's potentially going to fall this way, which is going to suck. And then I'm just going to have to get the new mount ready and then and just you know, pull the whole motor this way. And hopefully I can pull it and get a bolt in there. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm pretty nervous. I already jacked up the transmission as high as it can go. It's connected to the motor. I'm assuming I'm about to go get the cherry picker back out again, which just really sucks. <sighs> but we'll see what happens. So we are back, we are finished. We just had to do some sketchy stuff there for a little while. Uh, <laughs> we got it, we are still here, nothing happened, didn't get hurt. And as you can see, there's motor mount number one. And there's motor mount number two. Uh, and with that, it definitely moved the motor back. I think we actually have room now between our crank pulley and the uh, radiator. You can see the radiator's out a whole bunch you know, an inch or two because of the overflow, which I might switch this overflow up and the way this nipple is, it just kind of sucks. So, um, gotta figure that out later on. And a good way to mount this other than just, you know, a little bit of hardware, it needs some rubber somewhere in there so it doesn't crack over time. But anyway, the motor mounts are in. It was a struggle bus, I'll tell you that. Moving the jack, pushing some stuff, getting some sketchy, doing some sketchy stuff. But I do think that the motor sits lower. I really do. Um, I don't know how, but it definitely seems that way, especially because my old ones, uh, it, you know, they're like the stock styles. So they had like these two pieces that went up a lot more. I need to find a photo or something and see in relation to the shock towers uh, where my carburetor was. I don't have the suspension on, so the whole car is sitting on the springs and so the struts, and it kind of happens. Uh, but mainly because I want to get the headers and everything back on without the uh, export brace, Monte Carlo brace and everything uh, in the way. So that'll be coming up shortly. Uh, but for now, we are done with the motor mounts. So we actually have motor mounts now, unlike before, uh, pretty excited. Uh, car is definitely getting there going to be a lot more safer so uh, that will conclude this video as always though guys if you guys have any helpful information any tips or tricks or comments that can help anybody else along their mustang restoration journey please leave them below especially when it comes to these motor mounts if you do use the tcp motor mounts i can tell you that the short flange goes towards the front of the car and that short flange towards the front of the car uh, otherwise, your transmission mount will be off. And I know you could probably make up for that other ways and everything, but I'm using stock style stuff, so that's how I knew it was wrong. Uh, but anyway, that will conclude it. Uh, thanks, guys, for the support. We've been slowly getting some more views on things, getting some more comments, getting a few more subscribers. So I'm trying to put out uh, one video a week or so, but, you know, I just do this after work. And I got uh, family stuff to do that comes first, so... Uh, and it's getting to be like 90 degrees outside and hot. So I am limited uh, on some of my time working outside. So with that, I'm going to keep posting some stuff up. So if you like what you're seeing, follow along. And uh, thanks for all the support, guys.